Motorsport is one of the most exciting sports there is, and marshals are right at the heart of the action. And apart from enjoying the fun and camaraderie, they also play a vital role because without them the sport simply couldn't take place. Which is why it's so important that marshals are reliable and responsible. To become a marshal, you should ideally first join a motor club. You'll find many of them looking for helpers and several run training sessions. A video like this is no substitute for such training. It just covers some of the basics of marshalling. It covers equipment, first aid, spectators, rally marshalling, race marshalling, including karting, and other events. And it finishes with a brief look at two specialised areas, radios and firefighting. Many of the points are taken from the Motorsport Safety Fund's Z leaflet and the booklet, A Pocket Guide to Marshalling. Both are available from the fund. So first a look at personal equipment. Wearing the right gear is important for marshals. On many events you won't need any special equipment, but for instance on road rallies, light coloured high visibility clothing is advisable because lanes can be very dark places. On other events with the wrong sort of clothing, there's a danger of hypothermia in winter and sunburn or even heat stroke in summer. Be prepared for the worst and remember you can always take off an extra layer of clothing if you get too hot. So maybe have several jumpers and one or more pairs of thick socks. For very cold days, consider thermal underwear. Marshall should never get too near a fire. That's why we have extinguishers, of which more later, but nevertheless, as a precaution, wear natural fibres, cotton and wool particularly next to the skin, because man-made fibres can melt, even under protective overalls, and cause nasty burns. Always cover your arms and legs, even when it's hot. Stout boots are recommended. Don't wear trainers, they don't provide protection or support the ankles, and they're rarely waterproof. Hats are important, as we lose a high proportion of body heat through our heads in cold weather, while a hat will protect you from sunstroke in hot conditions. And that's all you'll need for many marshalling jobs. On other events, overalls protect your clothes and give additional protection against fire if they're made of the fire-retardant proban-treated variety. Always take waterproof tops and trousers with you and avoid thin nylon. Rubberized cloth and more expensive fire-resistant waterproofs are the best option. Choose colours which don't clash with flags. Orange is ideal. You'll need gloves to keep your hands warm on some events for protection on others. Wear thick ones that are reasonably loose-fitting and consider carrying a spare or a waterproof pair. Incidentally, even if you're wearing gloves, it's often quicker and safer to kick debris out of the way than pick it up. So, that's clothing. Looking at other equipment, earplugs or ear defenders are essential if you're going to be close to sources of concentrated noise. Safety glasses, whilst not a must, can be useful when marshalling close to gravel traps. And carry sun cream. You'll be surprised how easy it is to get burnt when you're standing out all day. Scissors will be handy, the sort that'll cut everything from seat belts to brake pipes, as will a screwdriver with a reversible blade, flat and posi drive if possible. And it's useful to have a hammer and nails or a staple gun on some events. Finally, on personal equipment, it's always wise to take ample food and drink, although not alcohol. Don't rely on catering being available. So that's all your personal equipment sorted out, and remember, it's not a bad idea to carry a checklist to remind you of things. Next, give some thought to first aid. Motorsport is a long way from being one of the most dangerous sports, but despite protective measures, high-speed impacts do occur, cars catch fire and people get injured. And what marshals do in the first few minutes can make a major difference. Above all, remember your own safety is vital. You can't help anyone if you yourself are injured. Keep the crash car between yourself and oncoming traffic and stop and think before you act. Some experienced marshals believe in counting to five first. 
ensure that no one is smoking near a crashed vehicle. Deal with fire first and try to isolate the vehicle's electrics. And, if possible, approach drivers from their direction of vision and speak to them. Their response, or lack of it, is a key indicator to whether further assistance is needed. Above all, watch the video First Aid in Motorsport, because that covers this subject in much more detail. So, with personal equipment sorted out and with a basic knowledge of first aid, you're ready to go marshalling. And whatever the event, be it race, rally or such like, some things apply to all of them. Sign on in plenty of time. The organizer's insurance will require your signature. Be quite clear where you are to marshal and what time you need to be there. Be equally clear on what your job is and whether you have all the equipment you need to do it. Make yourself known to other marshals and establish who's in charge. And make sure that you understand any communication systems being used. Clear, unambiguous communications between marshals are vital to avoid confusion. There's one other group of people with whom clear communications are equally vital, spectators. Motorsport welcomes spectators, but it has a responsibility towards them, and this is where marshals play a vital role. Remember that some spectators may be new to the sport and may need gently educating as to the risks. The best way to get people to do what you want is by example. If marshals are badly parked, if they're clearly there just to get a good view, if they just stand chatting and even worse, smoking, and with a camera or with a dog, well, they can't expect to command the respect of spectators or get their cooperation. Most people respond positively if they're politely informed of what's happening. It's the officious marshal who tells someone curtly that you can't go there who creates problems and provokes a hostile response. The message should be, if you go there, be careful because, or you might be better going this way because. A marshal needs to show that he understands why a spectator feels strongly about something. The way you walk up to people, your stance, your expression and eye contact. These can all make the difference between hostility and cooperation. Thanks very much in any branch of the sport, but in rallying above all. And with that in mind, let's now look at rally marshalling. Rally marshals may be more isolated from civilization than those at other events, which means warm and waterproof clothing is all the more essential, together with plenty of food and hot drinks. On rallies, you may also need the appropriate maps to locate the controls or stages where you are to marshal. It's wise to have a fire extinguisher, a first aid kit and a torch. A whistle and a reflective jacket may also be useful. On road rallies, you'll probably be asked to visit the start to sign on with the chief marshal. Make sure you know where you are to marshal. Time cards and procedures on road rallies can vary from event to event, so make quite sure that you're familiar with what you have to do at your particular control. Leave for your marshalling location in plenty of time to get ready before the due time of the first course cars. Think about where you are to park and stand. Don't leave yourself vulnerable if a competitor comes into your control and can't stop. And try to ensure that the road is not blocked to other users. Hi there. Keep a clear check sheet of all the times given, because it's surprising how often these are needed to confirm results. There's your hand out. You may be asked to run two or three controls during a road rally. If so, try to avoid the rally route itself and drive carefully and considerately on your travels. Hey, Glenn. I've got uh, 9.10 there. If you're marshalling on a stage rally, check your equipment as well as any instructions you've been given and allow plenty of time for getting there. 
you'll usually be asked to sign on with the stage commander. You'll be told the sector you're to marshal, usually between or at numbered junctions, and you may be given a map showing the junctions as well as rescue and recovery vehicle and radio points. If not, ask the stage commander where they'll be. Check the timing schedule and the procedure for the stage to be declared ready and to indicate when marshals are stood down. Then go to your post. When you get there, park in a safe position well away from the stage. Then introduce yourself to the nearest sector marshal or radio operator. Sector marshals control the sector and are responsible for briefing and deploying marshals and for dealing with any incidents. Please jump that one. Samuel, you're in charge of the top gate where the spectators are coming across. Uh, Mike, follow the chain of command and support senior organisers. In rallying especially, people should be prepared to be multifunctional and carry out duties they wouldn't normally do. Check that the stage furniture, rally arrows, box junctions, spectator tapes and so on is all in position and ensure spectators are in a safe place too. Excuse me, people. You're allowed to walk over the bridge, but you're not allowed to stand on it. Could you please move off either one way or the other? Consider the lines the rally cars are likely to take and keep in mind it's far, far easier to advise someone where to stand before they get settled than to have to move them later Thank you. because they're in a dangerous place. At the end of a rally, stay on your post until stood down by the stage commander, possibly via the nearest radio operator or until the course closer car passes your location. Never assume a stage is over. Recovery and rescue vehicles may still have work to do. Be prepared to help any recovery and rescue crew dealing with vehicles in your sector and by keeping spectators away. Before you leave, take down any stage furniture, arrows, tape, signs, brushwood barriers, etc., and leave it as instructed by the stage commander, usually in a pile by the track for the equipment officer to collect. And finally, remember to take any rubbish away with you. Now let's consider marshalling at a race meeting. Whatever your job, once in position, get to know the other marshals and find out who's going to do what. Usually at a marshal's post you'll find an observer, a flag marshal, an incident officer and the incident team of experienced marshals and course marshals. Remember that your own safety is important if you're to be able to help anyone. It's not a bad idea when you arrive at a marshalling point to check escape routes, whether you can roll under fencing, jump down a bank or get behind a solid barrier if a car heads towards you. And always keep an eye on oncoming race traffic. Whenever possible, avoid standing with your back to the traffic. If there is an incident, let the dust settle. The car may drive off while the time spent gathering your thoughts and deciding what to do can be invaluable. Stay on the banking until the last possible moment. If you have a team leader, wait for his or her signal, then use the safest route to the vehicle. Always take an extinguisher, although don't haul one all the way from your marshalling point if you're going to pass another on the way. Use the car involved in the incident for protection by keeping it between yourself and the oncoming traffic. Look and listen for danger, and if you hear a whistle, look up, see what's happening, and take appropriate action. And if more than one car is involved, split your resources. Check the track between sessions. Treat any oil spills, pick up any debris, sweep any gravel or dirt off the racing line, and report any track damage to your observer. We mentioned clear communication earlier. In racing, this is important between marshals, and it's worth knowing the basic hand signalling systems. Driver, you okay, driver? Driver! No signal, call the doctor! The doctor signal, one arm held up like a child asking a question in school, may be used to summon a doctor, paramedic or ambulance personnel who are on the post. The ambulance signal is arms crossed at the wrists and held above the head. 
This should only be used for an injury in the crowd or to summon assistance when a driver has been removed from a vehicle and been taken ill on the banking. The ambulance will usually arrive via the spectator area, so urgent cases may also require a rescue unit. If a driver is trapped or needs medical assistance and you don't have a doctor, paramedic or ambulance personnel on the post, call for a rescue unit because all rescue units should have medical personnel on board. The safe to cross signal is a sweeping movement with one arm as if 10 pin bowling. And finally, the stop signal is a hand held up in the stop position. So that's rallies and races. The same basic principles apply to marshalling at speed events. Hill climbs, sprints, autocross, rallycross and all-wheel drive events. There are three main differences, however. Speed events may have a more complex start procedure than races. Runs are usually stopped if there's an incident and only one flag is used at a speed event, a red flag, except when the event is taking place at a circuit when other flags may also be used. Although there may only be three or four cars on the course at one time, speed events can be almost as frenetic as race meetings and marshals need to be flexible, able to do different jobs or even a number of jobs at the same time. Karting provides some of the busiest, most action-packed and on occasion controversial events in motorsport. Marshals are usually guaranteed a tiring but satisfying day as carts pull off at the end of a practice session or race the next session will be getting underway, and whatever the circuit, the grids are likely to be full. Marshalling duties are similar to those at a race or speed event, but the number of carts competing increases the prospects of incidents, while the shortness of most circuits means speed in dealing with incidents, removing carts or getting them going again with a push start is essential. There are over 20 different branches of motorsport, and it isn't possible to cover them all here. But whether it's rallies or races or auto tests or trials, many of the points covered apply, not least the importance of safety and good lines of communication. Now a brief look at radios, our first specialised area. Usually experienced marshals do this job. If you're using radio communication, check the radio is on and is switched to the correct channel. Use the appropriate frequency for the event. And once you've reported in, don't leave a radio unattended. Use your call sign. Control from post two. And work through the radio controller. Control post two. Think about what you want to say before you press the PTT, push to talk button, then speak across the microphone rather than into it to avoid the noise of your breath distorting the transmission. Be clear on what radio language to use and most important, remember to release the button once you've finished so that others can speak. Clear the airways as soon as possible. If you don't know the answer to a question, say so, or ask control to wait one, yeah, wait one. Control. while you find out. If you've a long message, particularly one that includes a list or information which needs to be taken down, say break. Uh, break one. Pause for control to note what you've said and to collect your own thoughts, then carry on. At a race meeting, if an incident involves a yellow flag, the clerk of the course will welcome an indication of how many laps it's likely to be deployed. One more lap should do us, Control. It could help him decide if further action is required, such as to stop a race. And incidentally, when using a radio, remember there'll almost certainly be a spectator with a scanner listening in. Any further information, will you please contact me in the landline? There's just one final area to consider, firefighting. Fires very rarely happen in motorsport, but when they do, prompt decisive action is vital. This is one area above all where attending a training session is strongly recommended. 
You'll learn, for example, that it's standard practice to take an extinguisher to the incident just in case of a potential fuel leak. Whether the car has crashed or just stopped, a fuel line may have been severed and fuel could be pouring out of the car. The priority is to save life and then protect property. The most obvious danger to a driver is burns, but fires consume oxygen and lack of this can result in brain damage or even death before a casualty is actually burnt. The aim has to be to get to a burning vehicle and to have the fire under control and preferably extinguished within 30 seconds. To put out a fire, know the type of extinguishers, what they'll cope with and how they work. In motorsport, you'll usually be working with foam or powder, often in combination with each other. Always act as a team. Approach with the wind behind you to avoid smoke and powder getting blown into your face. Stop about 10 to 12 feet away from the blaze to collect your thoughts and be sure the team is ready to act together. Don't cover your colleagues with flames, powder or foam. Don't run through flames. Extinguish ground fires as you approach. Don't get too close as the power of the extinguisher could spread burning fuel. If a driver is trapped inside, the cockpit area takes top priority. If the driver is on fire, get him down on the ground, pat and smother the flames or use an extinguisher. If the driver is out and safe, then concentrate on the seat of the fire. Don't just wave an extinguisher about, attack the flame base. Watch out for flashbacks, under body fires and fires in an engine bay or in the boot. Don't throw open a bonnet or boot. One marshal wearing protective gloves and keeping low should crack open the lid with their back to the car while the other inserts the nozzle of the extinguisher into the opening and gives a quick burst. Once the flames are out, damp the car down and keep watching. Extinguishers are a must when clearing up a car that's been on fire. Some rubber compounds and plastics that have been burnt can produce powerful acids that cause severe injuries if you get them on your skin. If you feel a burning sensation, go to a circuit medical centre or a hospital casualty unit and tell them you may have been in contact with acids produced by burnt rubber compounds. Report the number and type of extinguishers that you've used so that they can be replaced. Include partially used extinguishers in your tally and don't rely on them for use if there's a later fire. Incidentally, if there's a fire or other major incident, you may be approached by people, journalists or spectators for your comments. You should always refer them to senior officials on the event. So, to sum up, have the right clothing and equipment to do your marshalling job properly. Remember, the event depends on you. Learn something about first aid. This could be important even when you're not marshalling. When dealing with spectators, remember that your approach and tone of voice is important. Whether marshalling at rallies, races or other events, be absolutely clear on lines of communication and who will be doing what. If using radios, keep to the point, work through the radio controller and always remember to release the button so that others can speak. If you get involved in firefighting, keep in mind how important it is to work as a team. The Motorsport Safety Fund hopes that you found this brief look at marshalling useful. If you've never marshalled before, why not give it a try? It's interesting, enjoyable and it puts you right at the heart of the sport. The fund wishes you safe and enjoyable motorsport.